momentarily, probably right now. All right, folks, welcome. Let's uh, get this party started here. I'm gonna pull up our agenda. Does everyone have an agenda in front of them or would you like me to pull it up for you? I don't know why I'm asking questions when I have everybody muted. <laughs> I am going to pull up the agenda, hold on. All righty. Uh, let's all read our motto. The healing social life is found when in the mirror of each human soul, the whole community finds its reflection. And when in the community, the virtue of each one is living. All right. How brave do we feel about doing a song? Last time I thought it was uh, pretty exciting, but maybe there's been a lot more practice in uh, <laughs> singing songs <laughs> over it Zoom. Have any, it doesn't have anything to do with practice. It's just the <laughs> Zoom experience and we could skip it if everybody was wanting to do that or we could sing. I'm, you know, skip it. Skip, let's skip, all right. Good enough for me. Okay. Double, double up the next meeting then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's move on to excitement sharing. Um, since I'm unmuted, I will go first. My excitement. What, what is my excitement? I don't, I, I just finished a new puzzle. So that's pretty much the most exciting thing that happened all day for, for, for me. So I'm going to pass along whoever would like to go next. I'll go. My uh, youngest daughter just graduated from Diamond High School. And so our, all of our four children are, we have now, all of them have graduated from high school and almost three have graduated from college. So three down, one to go. Anyway. Awesome. This is Jesse here and I'm happy to share that we had a beautiful eighth grade ceremony to celebrate the graduating class of Winterberry and I just want to give a huge huge thank you to Miss Glasser and Principal Pepe Phelps and the entire faculty for everything that they did to make sure that that was such a special special occasion. Um, everyone's speeches were just amazing and so heartfelt all the students just spoke beautifully and I was proud of each and every one of them. We had a surprise guest speaker having Keegan Randall come and join and she was so motivational. Um, and the singing um, with Kevin Wuerl singing the kindergarten song, um, it was all so special and to have Ed come and sing. Uh, all of those things just really, really mattered to our kids and it was beautiful. Um, and then we did this fun surprise drive to the school and um, the kids each received a box and, you know, we kept all that secret and I had no idea, okay, there's going to be in this nice box. The box was full of gorgeous things like painted silks and um, hand, like artwork that it was done, beautiful cards, a rose, I can go on and on and I know there's other eighth grade parents here on um, today's call too. So just, to, it was beyond um, expectation and so very special. So thank you for doing that for our students and for, um, for honoring them in that way. Thank you. All good. I, I have some excitement sharing um, and I'll second what Jesse said as an eighth grade parent. Um, but um, something I want to add is that my older daughter, who went to Winterbury from kindergarten through sixth grade, is now part of an enormous chat group of her old Winterbury classmates that Margot Herzog started. And they're just having fun. And they're, it's just, it's a riot. And I'm, it, it just warms my heart. So I'm pretty excited about that. 
I was going to say my excitement was just was the graduation. It, you know, there were some glitches, but overall it happened and it worked and it was a whole community um, effort to pull that off. And so it was it was really great that it came together and that Miss Towner showed up with all her bells and whistles. <laughs> <laughs> and the boxes were put together by the whole um, staff. It was really great. Oh, yeah. And Miss Lisa, who took care of the silks and set the dye and ironed them all for the graduates and folded them up so nicely. Oh, my children knew that that was Miss Lisa's work. Uh, my family went uh, camping this past weekend, and that was the first extended period of time out of the house and out in nature for an awfully long time. Um, it was very, very good for everybody's soul to be around a campfire and out of the house. So that was very nice. Um, I'm excited to celebrate this guy's graduation wave <laughs> from West High. And West High did a really good job too. Nothing like Winterberry's eighth grade, which was really spectacular, but West High did everything that they could have thought of to make them feel special. So it was very exciting. I was excited to see, I'm excited to see uh, uh, Mr. Jensen's uh, being a new addition to our school. Uh, I didn't know he was uh, an applicant uh, until I got the uh, school-wide email that he was the new third grade teacher. Um, Thomas and I went to college together. And if he's, if he's professionally anything like he is uh, otherwise, it, it'll be just terrific. I'm really excited that he's coming. And that picture, uh, there's a, if anybody looked at the photo that he submitted, uh, uh, I have a little funny story really quickly. Uh, it, it, you can see that his son is crying pretty hard in that photo. Well, they didn't intend to send that picture. I think it was an accidental submission. They sent the wrong one in. <laughs> so check that out. Um, I just want to give a shout out to Mr. Crawford. Today, Zoe and I drove by Winterberry and Mr. Crawford gave Zoe her compiled uh, main lesson books and got to say hello. And it was kind of an anticlimactic, both as a teacher and as a parent into the school year. So it's kind of nice to at least be able to wish Mr. Crawford well. And he wrote a really nice thing about Zoe in the front of her little thing, which was really sweet. So um, that was really nice of him. Uh, I can go next. Um, today was Drew's last day of third grade and it was really moving to hear um, Miss Towner, Molly sing. And uh, she gave a really beautiful slideshow of all the students and um, it, was, it was really touching, so. Thank you, Molly. And um, I also got my tires changed over today from studs to my summer tires, which has felt really good, even though it took like a long time. <laughs> um, and I got a new stand up desk, uh, one of those, you know, desks you can move up and down for my home office. Um, so that'll help my back. And uh, so, yeah, kind of felt like a productive day in a lot of ways. <laughs> Congratulations to my youngest daughter also graduated from South High School this past whatever time. So um, it's nice to have that trans transition. And I would really like to celebrate the, the enormous hard work that Sarah and together to put on the eighth grade graduation. It was really stunning and beautiful. And I did leave a celebration out, which was for my parents, because um, a lot of work went into help, not just the staff, the parents. Jesse helped get a, um, a guest speaker, which ended up being Keegan Randall, but we had many other efforts that we had also tried. Um, and she was she was great. And then um, Gretchen, Gretchen Glenn's mom, Jenny, she put together that amazing slideshow, which was sent out. So that made it really special.
All right, everyone, if there's no more excitement to be shared, then I will move us along here to approval of our minutes. Did everyone get a chance to review the minutes that were sent out earlier? Or if not, we can uh, take a minute to review those. I can also, if you don't have them in front of you, I can screen share. Just uh, type in the chat box if you need me to do that. All right, so Jesse is making a motion to approve the minutes as presented and Peter is seconded. Everyone twinkle. All right. Oh, Paula, I'm sorry, we missed you. Uh, we've already approved them, but I'd be happy to screen share if you wanted to see them or are you okay? Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the agenda. Um, the agenda, I revised it, but I didn't send it out, the revised one. So I'm just gonna screen share really quick so we can review an update that I made which is a uh, agenda item A, hold on one moment, please. <clears throat> Okie dokie, so I've added a met, uh, agenda item where we're going to vote on a replacement for our wonderful Claire. She sent out, uh, she has, uh, well actually Claire, I'll let you talk about Kyla to the group um, when that time comes. But right now we just need a motion to approve the agenda as modified with a new uh, agenda item. I'll move to approve the amended agenda. All right, Sarah moves and do I have a second? I'll second. All right, Claire seconds, Ever all in favor, twinkle. Great, let us move on. All right, so we are moving on to community comments. This is the public's time to talk and the board's time to listen. Winterberry Charter Council does not hear complaints against students or personnel in public session. And it is not the board's practice to engage in discussion or to answer questions during community comments. Com commenters' names will be recorded in the minutes. Thank you. Do we have any community comments to share? Okie dokie, let's move on to reports, principal's report. Julie, kick it over to you. Okay, thank you. Um, I could probably screen share. Let me just see that I've got it. Um, thank you for waiting here for a second. I see if I principal's report handy. Where is it? Hmm. Um. I don't. Is there an, a reason that I can't see my own report here? I wonder. Um. Maybe it's right here. No. Okay. Did you select? Oh, there you go. Never mind. You see it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so we are finishing up the year reports, Zoom meetings. Um, you know, I guess that's uh, as far as the staff goes. What what they are finishing up. Um, there's usually we you know are doing classrooms and getting together. We had our last staff meeting of the year on Tuesday, and so um, and so we wrapped up those things talked a little bit about what we'd be talking about in the fall so things are so unknown that we're just going to um kind of leave it at what we know um the graduation yesterday which was um was already talked about went really well uh, i feel like the students were well celebrated they did all did a beautiful job on their speeches um and it was fun to have the the guests um speaking and singing to everyone and it really it was an all um it was an all school effort i mean it's it's was really heartening uh you know when you 
you're doing something that you've never done before in this way. We usually gather, you know, at the um, theater and have graduation in a certain way. And this year was not that way. And, but everybody did the maximum of what they felt they, that we could put together in the, these times in, um, in the ways that we could to make it special for the students. And I feel like they did a beautiful job and the staff really showed up for that. Um, we were bidding farewell to Ms. Silcox, who's um, retiring 30 years. And that has been um, sad. It's been sad to say goodbye to her. It's been a sad kind of ending to her career. She's um, it's just difficult um, when you are ending in these times and you don't have all the uh, human connection that we would all long for at this point. Um, but again, like the staff is totally together and for her, um, supporting her in, in that. Uh, Maestro Baker, um, Emily Baker, got married on May 16th. She, I asked her if I could share this and she said yes. To um, now, I, I, I think it's Ruthier, maybe the French, okay. To Mac Ruthier at Derby Cove in Seward, beautiful wedding, beautiful day. Um, it was really, you know, everything that you would want, except <laughs> again in these times. So I think it all went well. Um, and she's very happy. Uh, so, and I shared my personal excitement of my daughter, Audrey, graduating. And so we're doing all that we can do for her during this. Um, she's feeling the disappointment, but we are working with her on that because that is sort of also part of life and that we have highs and lows. Um, student pickup a while back went well, um, just to, you know, just to keep that in my report. Miss Colleen organized it and did a beautiful job managing it, calling parents afterwards and taking care of tying up all the, la the loose ends. Um, you know, all the rest of the um, things that parents didn't pick up will be stored at school for the fall. Um, teachers did a remarkable job um, creating an offering for students online this year, um, enrichment opportunities, and then ongoingly checking in with their families, you know, wondering, oh, so-and-so wasn't in a Zoom meeting or I haven't heard from them or, or another student doesn't like to Zoom, so we'll talk on the phone with him or her. So um, each of our teachers did a very um, personal job with all of their families and our um, support staff and specialty teachers joined in in all the ways that they um, could in remarkable ways. Like when, you know, Ms. Robichaud did her um, little tiger, launched her tiger talk and her website, who knew? Ms. Robichaud is so talented about things technical. But anyway, um, and everybody did a really, I don't know, just everybody shined in this time in our Waldorf, Winterberry, non-technologically uh, savvy time, we just all came up in the world. So I'm very, very proud of everybody on our staff. Mr. Edwin, so usually teachers move their classrooms at the end of the year. That's something that we do all together and cleaning and moving. Well, now it has sort of come onto the shoulders of our one man that's here during the day, uh, Mr. Edwin. And it, it didn't ha doesn't have to, but he likes to polish the floors and have everything just so. So he's been doing a lot of work, a lot of work that I, he doesn't usually do. Um, anyway, and he's Mr. Edwin. So he's like Superman around here and has been for I think 14 years because he's been, he joined us a year after the school started. Um, third grade teacher. Uh, and as Alex uh, alluded to, um, we hired our new third grade teacher that will take um, Miss Silcox's second grade class um, for next year. His name is Thomas Jensen. He comes from Anchorage Waldorf where he's taught for seven years um, and most recently third grade. Uh, he's very excited to be here with all of us. And um, anyway, we're excited to have him. Uh, I, the movement hiring went well. I put in my paperwork for that and am waiting for the school district to okay me to share that person with everybody. Um, it's 
this person comes very, again, very highly um, recommended. It's really wonderful. Um, we're, we're lucky to have this person at Winterberry. So I'll leave it at that for now. Um, climate survey results. Ms. Colleen took um, the training last week on how to read the data from the climate survey um, that was taken. And she has a lot of thoughts and ideas. And we talked all about kind of what that looks like for our school and how we will be able to use that data to improve um, just improve our climate in a variety of ways uh, throughout the um, throughout the next school year. We'll kind of um, hone in on certain things, and I um, um, we outlined kind of different things that could you know happen um, and how student government will pick up a part. Um, we'll do a part for the faculty, and we'll do things having to do with just our pushing out to the community. We're also going to do um, a lot more um, parent workshops through this next year, and that's going to be kind of a highlight of next year, which is parent um, education, parent Waldorf education, and we'll be having um, um, very um, regular parent workshops offered for the whole community um, throughout the throughout the school year. Um, lottery numbers, as you and those, these are the children that are on the wait list, our classrooms are full up to um, sixth grade or fifth grade maybe. And then sixth, seventh and eighth, they there's, I don't have the, those actual numbers, but I think in seventh and eighth, there's 20. And, uh, and then there's another lottery that happens in the summer. So we'll see what that um, plays out and Sixth grade, I think there's 26 or something. So sixth grade is almost full. And our, our seventh and eighth grades are, you know, this is not unusual that they are not full, but um, we'll do what, what we can do to work on filling those up. And hybrid, um, we're, we've got 14 students of varying grades and our hybrid teacher, Jenny, is keeping a good, um, a good track of all that. Um, Looking forward to beginning a new school year in the fall and hopefully things will improve from now, but we're ready for whatever. I mean, we know we can, we can, we can figure out what we need to figure out in the time that we need to figure it out. And all um, teachers are, you know, uh, nobody wants it. Nobody wants to be online with students. I'll tell you that much but we will do our very best to do everything that we can do to serve our, our students in the very best way that we can do that for them educationally come what may in the fall. So I just wanted to read this poem because I, I love it and it's been my sort of little poem through the last year. I've been, you know, have it on my refrigerator. Uh, Joy and woe are woven fine, a clothing for the soul divine. Under every grief and pine runs a joy with silken twine. It is right, it should be so. We are made for joy and woe. And when this we rightly know, through the world we safely go. So there's a little, um, a little bit of hope. Hope for all good things coming, but, but also understanding to be prepared for whatever needs to come. Any questions while I unshare my screen, if I can do that? Anybody have any questions for me? And I will, I'm gonna move this away so I can, okay. Stop share. <sighs> Hello, everyone. Okay, back to you. Thank you, Julie. And that was really a beautiful poem to share. And it definitely captures the way I've been feeling with, with all of this. So that way to make me cry. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right, let us move on to the faculty report, either Sarah or Lisa. 
I can go ahead and speak. Um, it's always hard to come for a faculty report to come after the principal's report because um, Julie pretty much covers everything. I did want to recognize though that um, all year long, the faculty and staff have been engaged with um, mentoring and partnering with an eighth grade student. And um, I just wanted to celebrate that, that partnership and um, support. So I wanted to make note of that. Um, and yeah, just to echo what, what Julie had to say about none of us want to be teaching online, but I think that we have all developed some skills and some strategies and the summertime will allow for a gestation of how will things look. So that's pretty much all I have. I don't know, Sarah, if you have anything additional. Um, Lisa and I talked earlier and I wasn't sure whether or not this should go in the faculty report, but I know the district is um, putting together a team over the summer to maybe discuss how things will go in the fall and they, they sent an email to teachers today. So mm -hmm. I, I was just going to make mention that there are efforts that involve teachers at the district level for looking for figuring out how opening schools in the fall will look. I, I have a question about teacher training. What, what will you do any kind of teacher training this summer or what is that gonna look like for the staff, for the teachers? I think it looks um, different. I know there, I've looked at trainings and I found two and one is in New York and it starts at 9.30 East Coast time. So I don't think anyone's gonna do the 5.30 AM summer. <laughs> <laughs> summer, but the Center for Anthroposophy is putting one on that starts at 1230. So that would be 830. So I don't know. Um, personally, I am not going to do it just because it conflicts with family camping. And I don't know, for going into first grade, the things that I want to do that involve singing with other people and games, and those kind of experiences are hard to get online. And I've heard, um, I share that only because I've heard the sim similar sentiment from other people. And there is one asynchronous um, course that you can take where you, I think it's, you can pay and then have it access it for two weeks. And it sounds like maybe one person will do that, but it's, I, I'm not sure where everyone stands. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a strong sense of what everyone's plans are, but, um, it's it's feeling to me like most people are not going to be um, involved in in really rigorous structured trainings and we're at a point in our faculty where we've had a lot of people who have a ton of experience right now and we have also really really good relationships with each other so my my strong guess is that what you're going to see is a lot of collaboration in in and among ourselves and, and WPG has offered, um, you know, teachers that had started the process of getting their reservations and all that, WPG um, has offered, you know, because I think everybody pretty much got their money back and all that pretty, you know, and they said, okay, well then we'll just repackage into whatever is approved um, through administration to, into any online. And we have even, um, T TAs that would like to do some training. So we, there are, there are a little handful of people who feel like they would like to do something like that. And, and WPG has been really kind about just re reorganizing for them. And then the, the one other thing is that the new hire that, that was for third grade is one where we lucked out this year in that it, he's coming with an experience of that grade, having just taught it. So that's unusual and also lucky in the timing for us. Thank you, both of you for, for sharing. And I just have so much boundless respect and appreciation for all the Winterberry faculty, including Molly and Julie and, and all of you, because this is truly, unique circumstances and especially with Waldorf education, it's just, they could not be more opposite. And yet Winterberry staff and faculty have just completely 
somehow managed to make it feel like Winterberry was in our home every day, even though it was far away. It, it, it was really amazing. And I, I was just have felt so proud to be part of this school. So thank you, each of you, for all the work that you've done. Uh, it's, it's just so commendable. Thank you. All right, we are going to move on to WPG report from Jesse. Jesse, are you still there? Or did we lose you? We might have lost our folks. Um, oh, I'm, you I'm here. Oh, okay. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, now I can hear you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. So I appreciated hearing some of the components I was going to touch on related to training. Um, but, you know, WPG did meet earlier this month. And as you can imagine, we had additional conversations around um, initial fundraising plans we had for the year, the need to um, fully cancel the auction this year. And there were a lot of uh, understandable, sad feelings about needing to do that. Um, and I think I re reported previously that the venue that we had settled upon it did give a a full refund for the deposits made and so forth. Um, but that, you know, lent into other discussions about um, where we stand with our fundraising to date. And fortunately, WPG did start off the year with a nice sized nest egg. And even without uh, the auction, we are in a good position that if teachers were to pursue and be able to pursue um, training interests that, you know, we're in a good spot to be able to facilitate that. Um, and then certainly it should be acknowledged that anything that's done online or distance is going to be far less um, of an expenditure than a, a typical um, training. But we understand that, you know, teachers are going to need to just assess what will what they need to do and want to do, all things considered. And as Ms. Uh, Pepe Phelps mentioned, we will just adjust accordingly um, and shift. WPG also had conversations around how best to stay connected with families and support families. This is an ongoing conversation that we've been having. Um, and even just small but meaningful things like ensuring that if someone might want to um, purchase items that might typically be made available through the school store, how might that be achieved? Um, and just some creative thinking around how to do that, understanding that we really can't be on the premises of the school. Um, so that's, that's something that we'll c continue to think about and work with the administration on. Um, and keep all of you posted as we go. Um, there was also just a, a lot of discussion around a desire to know what to anticipate and how difficult it is right now for families to plan and the unease of frankly just not knowing how things may or may not evolve for the fall. Um, so I think that reflects what um, Ms. Glasser mentioned with the district doing scenario work and involving teachers. Um, I feel an eagerness with our WPG body to have a better sense of what those scenarios might look like, maybe only just for the ability to be aware. Um, and we had a little bit of discussion about are we able to do a welcome to back to school picnic? And how do we know how we're going to plan for that? Um, so you can, you can imagine there's just some natural curiosities and also, um, you know, some, some concern over how, how hard it is to, to plan. Um, but that said, the group does plan to reconvene again over the summer, just, in order to be responsive and keep 
that communication flowing. So that's the end of my report for now, but I'm happy to take any questions. Jesse, I've got a question. This is Sarah. Um, do you know who the treasurer is that is taking over for Barbara Amy? I do not. Well, I, we do. We have a treasurer that's been named, and I will have to follow up in order to um, help make that connection. But you're right. We did say goodbye to members of WPG, and we have appointed a new treasurer. And then I, I should also just note that um, Barbara Amy served as our treasurer and did a wonderful job um, in that role. And we are very, very thankful. She's their outgoing family of our school. And we um, gave you know, a lot of thanks for her service to our school over the years. Thank you, Jesse. Is, is there any other questions for Jesse before we move on? Okay. I just wanted to, and, sorry, I just wanted to share that the new treasurer's name is Trina. Trina. She's a, she's a hybrid parent. I had to put that plug in too. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, uh, next up we have uh, a safety committee. Is there any update on safety? Uh, well, we have, um, we've, we've gotten a nice, well-established safety committee. Um, this year we practiced that and we kind of blended a couple of committees together and had a um, very consistent monthly meetings. And in our last, um, couple meetings, we uh, also looped in a upper grade student, which we thought was um, kind of a, a nice way to, you know, have our whole community voice represented with our students who, um, who can give us a little sense of, you know, their, their understanding or feeling around safety in their school and um, we'll continue that same process through the next year. Uh, how about outdoor play space? Well, uh, it is raining, thankfully, because I couldn't find the little thing to turn the hose on earlier to water the newly new plants I planted yesterday. So thank you, rain. Um, and uh, there's a plan for watering and organizing, um, keeping the yard in good shape, the garden um, watered so that the plant, the potatoes that were planted and all that for the, the incoming third graders will grow. Um, and then um, we will pick up our work with the outdoor space with Una um, in the fall, most likely. I mean, the, the, the discussion about it as far as equipment and other kinds of things we're going to the plan, the phases of the plan for building other kinds of things in our outdoor space. Yeah, and Julie, I actually wanted to add to that. Uh, I We participated in a socially distanced crab apple tree planting to honor grade eight, uh, last, was it last week? I think, I think it was last week. And uh, it was a really special experience and I've also signed up to help water said tree, but it, it seems like there's several different watering committees or different parts of the play yard that are being watered by different people. And I just think it's really lovely that everyone pitches in over the summer to keep our school looking like nice. I love that too. That's really sweet. Thank you. All right, let's move on to legislative policy. Jesse. So I would just want to follow up on an item that we touched upon briefly at our last meeting. Um, and just to share that um, we had just a brief curiosity conversation around a contract for distance learning. Um, that was for amount of, I think, 
$525,000 to set up a, and stand up a brand new approach to distance learning and placing um, Alaska teachers uh, across the state and to facilitate that. Um, and there's just ongoing concerns about the necessity of that type of a program and um, just something that I'm continuing to monitor and, and listen to the dialogue on that piece. Um, and and considering what it is truly that um, our communities need at this point in time. I, earlier in this meeting, I, I heard many individuals reflecting on the quick work that we saw our faculty at our school do to stand up um, online supports for students. And yes, that was challenging, but uh, I really commend our faculty for doing that hard work and doing it so well. Um, and the offerings were fantastic. Um, the patience and the diligence of, of faculty to work with families and students is needed. Um, you know, that, that's something uh, to celebrate. Um, and certainly as we move forward, um, it's an ongoing curiosity as to what uh, other more system-wide approaches to online learning may or may not look like in our state. Um, beyond that, I would just note that there's been obviously a, a need to really focus and hone in on the pandemic and stand up um, response to that. Uh, there was a, a need for the legislature to come back together. They did so very, very quickly um, in order to um, go ahead and, and disperse and have the ability to get that funding from the last CARES Act package out. Um, that said, we're, con we're contending with enormous um, unemployment rates and job loss rates across our state on top of the fact that we saw uh, the price of oil go down so dramatically. All of that is flowing into a scenario where um, our state as a whole is um, really, really tight on revenue. And um, unless there's either a huge turnaround or um, an increase or an alternate revenue uh, found and pursued, there's going to be a, a ongoing pressure put on the public education system and, um, and challenges in that regard. So that, that's a recap. Um, and I'm happy if there's any other questions or curiosities around that contract piece, um, we can discuss that um, or any other components that any of you are interested in that relate to policy and, and legislative work right now. Are there any more questions for, or any questions for Jesse? Uh, obviously this is a pretty important topic, but uh, I personally don't, don't have any at this point. Alrighty, thank you, Jesse. Uh, let's move on to budget. So Hello. Shana. Yeah. Um, did everybody receive the budget report that I sent and look at it or? Yes, I did. You did? Okay. Now I got to pull it back up. <laughs> I'm not sure where I put mine. Um, hold on. All right, so um, as far as the budget report, we're just closing down the accounts in the school. Um, our fiscal year 2019-2018 is actually is under budget based on my estimate. Um, still closing all the accounts. They won't be fully closed till probably mid-June when, um, when the finance department and budget completely um, tally everything. It appears based on my es estimate, we're probably in comfort about $72,000 from this fiscal year. 
um, which is good. Uh, previous encumbered funds, uh, fiscal year 19 was 297,071 and then fiscal year 18 was 78,568. So it looks like we'll have around, I don't know, about 4,000 or 400,000, which is pretty good um, in our, what we'd call our savings account. Um, Mercurius uh, supply has all been ordered. Uh, we were able to maximize the 20% discount again. Um, and then all other supplies will be ordered at the beginning of the year. Um, Shana, this is Claire. Um, how, how long are those encumbered funds um, solvent for us? Is there, do they term out after a period of time? No, not, well, as of right now, they don't. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's not gonna change in the future um, for charter schools and, and things like that. We are so far have been very lucky that they've allowed us to save it. Um, obviously they frown upon us saving large, large amounts and not utilizing on the students, but ours as far as um, compared to other charter schools is pretty conservative, especially since we already use such a large amount um, for our addition. So, um, and it is good to save the amount that we have right now, especially with so much unknown that is going on. So, I mean, we did an estimate of what our budget, you know, is gonna be next year, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're gonna get all of those funds. And with this, um, these fun other funds that are encumbered, it'll allow us to still make, stick to our budget if for some reason we don't get everything or we lose students or, or things like that. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? I just want to make a comment um, that I really, that Shana, I really appreciate uh, how um, careful and conservative you are with all, um, you know, our funds, and also that you're keeping, um, you're keeping that in mind. But also just the way you've gone through, um, Shana got us really um, on track for inventorying all of our supplies and things, so that we're we're not stockpiling things that we're using them year to year. Um, because that does save us a lot of money. Uh, those, the, the supplies that we use for students here are expensive and we've done a really good job in the last few years um, under Shana's direction. <laughs> Encouragement, we'll say. Anyway, I just really appreciate it because it shows and it keeps us strong and solvent and healthy um, financially. Shana, thank you very much. All right, we will move on to our everyone's favorite topic, the Alliance for Public Waldorf Education. Well, the Alliance actually um, is kind of revived somehow. They were going to have that huge conference in um, Chicago, and I think that they, you know, came, you know, came out of their slumber to try to pull this off in that way. And now they've kind of poured that energy on, onto online um, kinds of things. Uh, so they, there's there's core values in the alliance that um, that they they use when they um, go and judge schools and to give them the certification or whatever that people um, the schools go to go for. And we, as a staff, reviewed those core values in the fall of this year and just sort of to keep in our minds um, as teachers and staff members kind of what our core values were in Waldorf education that we agreed to. We had a little bit of discussion and I see us doing the same thing in the fall, um, bringing up those core values, reviewing them, and I will continue to pursue the alliance. And again, because we have not renewed our membership with them because we had some grave concerns about what have you done for me lately. Anyway, that's my alliance song. Thank you, Julie. Uh, Let's move on to, does the grant committee have anything to report? Claire or Alex? Uh, Claire, uh, feel free to 
jump in. I, we we don't have a whole lot to report. Um, we haven't had any formal meetings. There were some. I had a couple of informal uh, sort of discussions about uh, assessing our resources and um, uh, planning some meetings. We have a plan to make a plan. I think uh, if I if I get the vibe correctly to um, and sort of resuscitate our uh, our our list of resources, our um, our uh, our list of skilled uh, new skilled uh, contributors, and um, get our heads together uh, in the coming months to um, to sort of revivify our um, our efforts. So I, I think we'll be having uh, more uh, some some official meetings here soon. That's what I have to report. Thank you, Alex. All right, so we're moving on to our first item of business. And then after this, uh, we'll be entering executive session, which will then, um, after that, we'll conclude the meeting. So uh, let's, uh, our first or our first order of business is uh, so as everyone knows, Claire is finished here at Winterberry because Fern graduated and we're going to miss her so much. We would literally not exist right now if it weren't for Claire and all her hard work on the charter and the bylaws and as a longtime member of our Winterberry community. So Claire, we are going to miss you terribly so much and thank you for everything that you've done and i wish we could have an actual celebration to appreciate you as much as you deserve because yeah you're amazing so thank you <laughs> um claire is as always so efficient that she found her own replacement and so i'm going to turn <laughs> turn it over to you claire where you can talk about kyla and then we will have a vote to determine if we would like to welcome Kyla to the Charter Council and uh, bid Claire farewell. So I'll turn it over to you, Claire. Thanks, um, Susanna. So I'm just going to remind everybody in the bylaws when we have a vacancy that occurs and there's still um, a part of a term left to fill, we can fill that by a majority vote of the whoever's on the board or whoever's is on the Charter Council right now. Um, so I'm just reading from the bylaws right now. The replacement member of the WCC shall be elected for the unexpired term of um, her, his or her predecessor. So that's what I'm suggesting that we do today. So it's a simple, um, um, if you have all had a chance to look at um, Kyla's um, candidate statement and anybody wants to make a motion and second, that's exact. That's that's the process that we'll go through. Um, I will say this: if there's anybody on the uh, council that has met Kyla in person, I have not. Um, the story of her coming um, into the expressing interest in the Winterbury Charter Council is um, she was late in expressing her interest for the elections that we just held in February. Um, so, but because she was late, um, I hooked her I said well you know I think I know there's going to be a vacancy in May are you interested and she was um, very interested so has anybody else on the council um, interacted or met with her knows her in person yeah I um, she's a hybrid family another mm -hmm. plug for hybrid um, anyway she they're a lovely family who I've interacted with just you know a few times throughout the year being in the classroom and you know in the lobby and things like that I have talked to her on the phone a couple of times um, she has uh, three darling little boys the youngest that is a kindergartner and hybrid and she's um, you know her heart is definitely in the um, has, a, has a heart for Waldorf education and has um, gone through the Lifeways or part of, you know, a Lifeways training program and done a little in-home Waldorf inspired um, childcare. So she's, she definitely um, has a sense of what Waldorf education is about. Um, and she's a lovely, easy to work with, good communicator, things like that. I mean, as much as I know about her. Okay. And Miss Lisa, you know her too? Oh, Kyla, a little bit too. Um, 
and yeah, she's she's very, very, very committed to Winterberry. Her her son, who was kindergarten and hybrid last year, will be moving into first grade. Um, and as Julie made note of, she has two younger, so she's going to be with the school for for quite a while. And I had the opportunity um, to have a discussion with she and her husband about the results of of the first grade screening and he's totally on board too. So I think we have a family that's going to be with us for a long time, a family that is definitely rooted and committed to Waldorf education and Kyla's enthusiasm is just um, absolutely infectious. So she's, I've had nothing but wonderful experiences with her. Great. Um, I would just say my two cents after reading the statement that she submitted after um, is that her experience uh, being a founder for the Fairbanks um, Waldorf Charter School is especially important, I think, in terms of just somebody that has the, already has a, a, you know, known about how to do the interplay between a local school district and a Waldorf inspired charter school. So um, she looks like a really, really solid candidate to me. So anyway. Um, I'm not sure if I can make, I guess I could make the motion unless anybody else has any other questions or discussion. It's in the chat box. So Jesse moved oh, there you go. to um, approve Kyla. And okay. Before we vote really quickly, I just wanted to, um, Claire, you actually brought up what I was going to say, which was, I really appreciated that she had some experience in Fairbanks with that initiative that they have. I think that is invaluable experience and I was really impressed and I think it would also be really great for uh, us to have a board member who has hybrid experience to kind of lend a voice to that part of our school because honestly I don't know very much about it but I know it's a huge part of our school community and I think it would be great to have that representation on our board even though she's a part of the whatever the non-hybrid Winterberry <laughs> thing is. Classroom, we call it classroom. Classroom, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we have a motion, Jesse has a motion to approve Kyla to fill this position and Mark has seconded. Uh, can I get a majority twinkle in favor? All right, great. Thank you everyone. Uh, that was very efficient and we're I'll reach out to Kyla after this meeting and welcome her officially to the WCC and give yes, her. Yes, I, I, um, I'm happy to do that because um, okay. I'd, like um, I'd like to inspire her on a few um, things that I never got around to doing that I think she might be um, okay. uh, what, the right person for. So okay. I'll, no that I'll give her a little board packet too. Okay, Claire, just really quickly, do you think you could CC me on that? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And um, and if you want, I wanted to meet her in person. So maybe the three of us could um, find some time in the summer, not right away, like when we're all comfortable expanding our bubbles. Yes, that would, that would be great, thank you. Okay. Uh, what right. is your last name for the minutes? Uh, Wilkinson, W-I-L-K-I-N-S-O-N. Did I get it? Okay. And Kyla, K-Y-L-A? Uh, yes. All right, thanks. Great. All right. Uh, so we are going to move into executive session. And rather than start executive session and then come back to gratitude, let's go ahead and do gratitude now. And then everyone who is not um a part of the executive session can finish up for the night all right so let's start with gratitude uh i have gratitude for this wonderful school in what has been a very eventful year after another i i think everyone could agree that the year before was also very eventful and i've just been continually impressed with how the school comes together as a community and supports everyone and I just feel so proud to be a part of Winterberry and I love it dearly. So I'm thankful for all of you as well, all our faithful board members. This is our new normal for now. And I just appreciate everyone showing up and participating and helping keep our school coming along. So thank you to all of you. 
this is Jesse. I, I want to give um, notes of gratitude to Claire for her service. And I, I do wish that we could, on this last meeting, be all together in our circle and able to hug you and thank you. But really, you have given so much to our school for so long, and um, we will miss you wholeheartedly. And as uh, I got to understand rules and responsibilities with WCC, I learned so much from you, and I learned just from watching you and listening, and I really just appreciate um, the level of service that you have given our school over the years and the leadership that you have lent to this body. Thank you. Um, I'm going to give a big gratitude and I'm going to keep it short because I'll start to cry, but I want to thank Sarah Glasser for everything she's done for the kids that just graduated yesterday. Um, that's it. Thank you. I would like to thank Claire. Um, like I just said, what are we going to do without you? Um, I would like to thank our Winterbury staff who stepped up <laughs> in ways that they never in a million years imagined as a joining a Waldorf community. Uh, I'd like to thank parents who stepped up like they never thought they would have to during this time. And, um, and I know that's been, a you know, just a deep hardship on parents to have to, um, um, teach and support their children in that way. I would like to thank Daryl, who, um, Vincent, who's here, and others at the district who have personally helped me um, navigate my way through Zoom, um, Zoom to YouTube to trying to get things um, uh, distributed to people in the ways that we need to do in our WCC meetings, public and things like that, really important things. But Daryl's been a real support to me, but also to our charter school group. I mean, he has, um, you know, kept his meetings up all through the weeks and, you know, takes, you know, all these questions that we all have for him all the time in any fashion that we want to send them. And he's just always really steps up and I really appreciate him. And he said he'd stay for, you know, he's not, not retiring as it turns out. He's gonna stay for 10, 12 more years maybe. So <laughs> no, he didn't say that. <laughs> I wish. Anyway, thanks very much to everybody. Um, I'm very grateful for uh, Ms. Silcox before she taught, um, my younger daughter, uh, she did. She was the reading teacher, and uh, my older daughter struggles with dyslexia. And she uh, gave her the power and ability to uh, read and a love of reading, which I don't know that there are too many better gifts um, to be given. Uh, so I really appreciate her doing that for Sophia. I'd like to give a little gratitude in advance. Uh, to the school district uh, administration, who I can only imagine is going to have a little extra workload this summer, uh, planning for next year. So thank you in advance. I'm just very I'd grateful like to, to Kim. Oh. oh, sorry. Go for it, Paula. I'll catch you next. To, on the go next. Okay, mine's really short. I just um. Again, super appreciative to um, the Winterberry family, the faculty, the staff, and uh, the parents who um, have just made enormous efforts to get us through this last quarter of the school year. It's, um, you know, it's been a historic period and it's definitely not over. So um, kudos to everybody who's keeping the, the train on the tracks. And, um, and I wasn't able to view the uh, graduation yesterday, but from all I've heard, Heard, it's, it was remarkable. And so um, thank you, Sarah, and everybody else who um, pulled that off. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Claire, I just wanted to say thank you uh, for, uh, for all the work you did before us 
before me and uh, to say that truly we will honor that. I will honor that by continuing to build um, and, uh, and, and to take new steps. Um, and I would like to thank everybody for maintaining the pattern and maintaining rituals in this time right now. Uh, I think that we're truly seeing that the fabric is holding even in difficult times. Thank you. And I just wanna say thank you, Claire. Um, I have enjoyed working with you and I've just been so impressed and amazed at everything you've done and all the projects you've tackled and um, just incredibly grateful. And um, I wish you and your daughter luck as you move on. And I hope I run into you, whether it's on the trails or anywhere else, maybe Winterberry when we're all back together and this is over. So thank you so much. And I'd like to express my gratitude to the Winterberry administration, staff, families, incredibly resilient. You just took this thing on beautifully. And to Claire, thank you so much. Not only do you have a fun name, but uh, <clears throat> doing the charter renewal with you was lots of fun. You were precise, uh, very professional, and it was a lot of fun to get through it with you. So best of luck to you and your family. My gratitude was also for you, Claire, um, not just for WCC, but as a, as a parent, um, you're very generous and I'm sad to see you go. That's the hard, the good thing is forming good relationships, but the hard thing is seeing people go. And I have two other parents that I'm happy in the room that I'll get to see around, but it's, it's hard to see you go. So thank you for everything. Uh, thank you everyone for sharing your gratitude. Um, it's definitely the most tearful gratitude I've ever had, but I think it's appropriate to share that with each other. Uh, these are not ordinary times. So thank you all. Um, let's move on into executive session. So uh, if everyone recalls, the staff members will excuse themselves from this and uh, we'll conduct our evaluation of Julie and then we'll say goodnight. So thank you, wonderful staff members. Oh, Suzanne, and we, we will- uh, Oh, sorry. Do we adjourn this part of the oh, meeting? Did I include that in the yes. minutes? Yeah, so I need a motion to uh, Suzanne, you just said you have to vote to go into executive session. And then at that point, um, Julie can turn off the YouTube, then, then you're in executive <laughs> session. We might want to do that, yeah. <laughs> and then, and then um, whether you want me in or not, the WCC, just if you want me there, you can invite me. If not, I will not take it personal. <laughs> um, I... I personally am okay with you being there, Daryl, but I think I would like to have Julie make that decision since it's your evaluation, Julie. It's it's up to you. Okay. Oh, so absolutely. Daryl, you can okay. Yeah. All right. So can I get a motion to move to adjourn? And then we'll have a motion to move into executive session, or is it the other way around? Doesn't matter. Other way around. Move to go into executive session. Go into executive session, okay. you come out of executive session, then you adjourn. All righty. Okay. All right. So can I get a motion to move into executive session, please? I'll move to go into executive session. And it says in the All chat right. box. We have we have our All right. in the right. chat box. But we have to say why we're going into executive session. And po another point of All order, right. the chat box does not show on YouTube uh, stream. So mm -hmm. in order to be transparent to the public, you somebody should at least repeat what's on there so people know who makes the motion, who seconds, and the vote. This is Jesse. I make a motion to move into executive session in order to proceed with an evaluation 
of Principal Pepe Phelps. This is Claire and I'll second. All right, so Claire is seeing that motion. Can I get a twinkle for everybody? I am twinkling. All right. Okay, so <laughs> we will now be moving into executive session. Julie, if you could uh, kill the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> okay.